Concorde, an icon of aviation, revolutionized air travel by flying at twice the speed of sound. To manage the heat generated at these speeds, it used a special white thermal paint to reflect solar radiation. In 1996, PepsiCo's Project Blue campaign transformed Concorde F BTSD into a blue flying billboard, symbolizing their innovative spirit, but also presenting unique technical challenges. Join us as we explore Concorde's history, the science behind its thermal paint, and the Pepsi campaign that gave this supersonic aircraft a new look. A total of 20 Concorde aircraft were constructed and categorized into four distinct groups based on their purpose and development stage. Initially, two prototype aircraft were built to test and refine the basic design and concept. Following this, two pre-production aircraft were developed to bridge the gap between the prototypes and full-scale production models, incorporating improvements and modifications identified during testing. Additionally, two development aircraft were created to further fine-tune the design and ensure readiness for commercial use. Finally, 14 production aircraft were manufactured specifically for commercial service, fully equipped to carry passengers and operate within the rigorous demands of regular airline operations. The two prototype Concorde aircraft were specifically utilized to rapidly expand the flight envelope of the aircraft. This involved pushing the aircraft to its operational limits in terms of speed, altitude and maneuverability. The primary goal was to validate the design calculations for supersonic flight, ensuring that the theoretical models and predictions held true in real-world conditions. By doing so, engineers could confirm the feasibility and safety of Concorde's design for sustained supersonic travel. FWTSS, production designation 001, was the first Concorde to take flight, achieving this milestone on the 2nd of March 1969. After an extensive career, it was retired and delivered to the French Air Museum at Le Bourget Airport on the 19th of October 1973. Throughout its service, Concorde 001 completed 397 flights, accumulating a total of 812 flight hours, with 255 of those hours spent at supersonic speeds. Significantly, Concorde 001 was specially modified for the 1973 Solar Eclipse mission. These modifications included the installation of rooftop portholes and observation equipment to facilitate detailed study of the eclipse. During this mission, the aircraft flew over Africa and achieved the longest observation of a solar eclipse recorded, lasting approximately 74 minutes. Concorde 001 remains on display at the museum, preserved in its solar eclipse mission livery, complete with the unique rooftop portholes. GBSST Production designation 002 first took to the skies on the 9th April 1969, flying from Filton to RAF Fairford. This aircraft continued its operations until its final flight on the 4th March 1976, when it was relocated to the Fleet Air Arm Museum at the Royal Naval Air Station Yeovilton in England. Over the course of its service, Concorde 002 completed 438 flights amassing a total of 836 flight hours, with 196 of those flights conducted at supersonic speeds. Both pre-production Concorde aircraft played a crucial role in further refining and developing the aircraft's design. Pre-production aircraft underwent significant modifications compared to the prototypes. Key changes included an altered wing plan form to improve aerodynamic efficiency, increased fuel capacity to extend range, updated engine standards for better performance and reliability, and revised air intake systems to optimize airflow and enhance engine efficiency. These enhancements were critical in transitioning from the initial prototype stage to the final production models ready for commercial service. GAXDN, production designation 101, first took flight on the 17th of December 1971 from Filton. After a career spanning several years, it was retired and delivered to the Imperial War Museum Duxford in England, where it landed on the 20th of August 1977. During its service life, this aircraft completed 269 flights, totaling 632 flight hours, with 168 of those flights conducted at supersonic speeds. FWTSA, 
production designation 102, first flew on the 10th of January 1973 from Toulouse. This was the fourth Concorde built and the first to feature the characteristics and shape of the future production aircraft. Interestingly, it was the first Concorde to fly to the United States, making this historic journey on the 20th of September 1973 to Dallas, Texas. For a period, the aircraft was uniquely painted with British Airways colours on one side and Air France colours on the other. Throughout its service, FWTSA completed 314 flights, totaling 656 flight hours, with 189 of those flights conducted at supersonic speeds. It was retired on the 20th of May 1976 and is now on display to the public at Orly Airport in Paris. The production Concorde aircraft differed significantly from the original prototypes and pre-production models, requiring re-examination and testing of various aspects to achieve certification. In total, six development aircraft were instrumental in this process. The two prototypes, 001 and 002, two pre-production models, 101 and 102, and two early production aircraft, 201 and 202. These development aircraft were essential for refining the design and ensuring that the final production models met all necessary safety and performance standards. FWTSB, production designation 201, first took to the skies on the 6th of December 1973 from Toulouse. Its final flight occurred on the 19th of April 1985, flying from Châteauroux to Toulouse after amassing a total of 909 flight hours. The aircraft is now preserved and displayed inside the Aeroscopia Museum, located near the Airbus factory in Toulouse. GBBDG, production designation 202, first flew on the 13th of December 1974, traveling from Filton to RAF Fairford. The aircraft's final flight occurred on the 24th of December 1981, after accumulating a total of 1,282 flight hours. Following its retirement, GBBDG was stored in a hangar at Filton Airfield and used as a source of spare parts for British Airways' Concorde fleet. In May and June of 2004, the aircraft was sectioned and transported by road to the Brooklands Museum in Weybridge, Surrey. After undergoing extensive restoration, it was opened to the public in the summer of 2006, allowing visitors to experience a significant piece of aviation history. But it would be one of Air France's Concorde that would set the scene for one of the world's most impressive ad campaigns. Air France operated seven production Concorde aircraft in commercial service, one of which was FBTSD, production designation 213. This aircraft first flew on the 26th of June 1978 from Toulouse. It was retired on the 14th of June 2003 and is now housed at the Musée de l'Air et de l'Espace Air and Space Museum at Le Bourget, France, joining the earlier Concorde 001. During its operational life, FBTSD accumulated a total of 12,974 flight hours. In 1996, FBTSD featured a promotional paint scheme for Pepsi, which was blue with the Pepsi logo. However, the wings remained white. Due to the thermal constraints imposed by the dark blue livery, the aircraft was restricted to flying at a maximum of 20 minutes at Mach 2.02 and otherwise limited to Mach 1.7. The production Concorde aircraft differed significantly from the original prototypes and pre-production models, requiring re-examination and testing of various aspects to achieve certification. FBTSD also holds the world record for circumnavigating the globe in both directions. It completed a westbound flight around the world in 32 hours, 49 minutes and 3 seconds on the 12 to 13th of October 1992. Later, it achieved an eastbound circumnavigation in 31 hours, 27 minutes and 49 seconds on the 15th to 16th August 1995. Additionally, FBTSD was the only Concorde to land in Central America setting a new time record for the route between Juan Santa Maria International Airport in Costa Rica and John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York. The Concorde measured impressive 62.17 metres in length, with a wingspan of 25.56 metres and a height of 12.19 metres. 
Its delta wing design, optimized for supersonic flight, spanned an area of 358.25 square meters. The Concorde's performance was nothing short of extraordinary. It could reach a maximum speed of Mach 2.04, equivalent to 2,180 kilometers per hour, or 1,354 miles per hour at cruise altitude. Its typical cruise speed was Mach 2.02, with a range of 7,222 kilometers and a service ceiling of 18,300 meters, the Concorde soared above commercial jetliners. The Concorde's takeoff speed was 250 knots, while its landing speed was 187 knots. It could climb at a rate of 25.41 meters per second, equivalent to 5,000 feet per minute. Powering the Concorde were four Rolls-Royce, Snecma, Olympus 593, MK610 afterburning turbojets. Each engine produced a thrust of 38,050 pounds force with afterburner. This incredible power allowed the Concorde to achieve its unmatched speeds. Inside, the Concorde could accommodate 92 to 128 passengers, depending on the configuration. The crew consisted of two pilots, one flight engineer, and six cabin crew members. Despite its high-speed capabilities, the Concorde offered a luxurious travel experience. The Concorde was renowned for its distinctive droop nose, which improved pilot visibility during takeoff and landing. It also featured advanced navigation and autopilot systems, allowing for precision flight at high speeds and altitudes. To cope with the extreme temperatures generated by air friction at supersonic speeds, the Concorde was built with heat-resistant materials. One of the Concorde's innovative features was its automatic fuel transfer system, which maintained the aircraft's center of gravity during different flight phases, ensuring stability and performance. Among the Concorde's, FBTSD holds special records and moments it set the world records for the fastest flights around the world in both directions. On October 12 to 13, 1992, it flew westbound around the world in 32 hours, 49 minutes and 3 seconds. The route included Lisbon, Santo Domingo, Acapulco, Honolulu, Guam, Bangkok, Bahrain, and back to Lisbon. Then, on August 15, 16, 1995, FBTSD completed the eastbound round-the-world flight in 31 hours, 27 minutes, and 49 seconds, flying from New York, JFK, to Toulouse, Dubai, Bangkok, Guam, Honolulu, Acapulco, and back to New York, JFK. This record remains the current Guinness World Record. But who would have thought something as simple as paint would play one of the biggest parts to the Concorde's speed? The Concorde was more than just a beautiful aircraft. It was a technological masterpiece. One of its crucial features was its white thermal paint. The Concorde's white thermal paint was specifically designed to manage the extreme heat generated by air friction at supersonic speeds. As the aircraft traveled faster than the speed of sound, the airframe would heat up significantly, reaching temperatures as high as 127 degrees Celsius or 260 degrees Fahrenheit. This heat is produced due to the compression of air in front of the aircraft as it travels at supersonic speeds. Unlike conventional subsonic aircraft, where frictional heating is minimal, the Concorde faced a significant challenge in managing this heat to ensure both the safety and comfort of its passengers and crew. The white thermal paint served two primary functions, reflecting solar radiation and dissipating the heat generated by air friction. The white color reflects a large portion of the sun's rays, preventing the aircraft from absorbing excessive heat while flying at high altitudes where the sun's radiation is more intense. Moreover, the paint's unique formulation was designed to dissipate heat more efficiently reducing the thermal load on the airframe. This helped maintain the structural integrity of the aircraft, preventing the aluminum skin from overheating and potentially weakening under the stress of repeated supersonic flights. Unlike Concorde, conventional subsonic aircraft are not subject to the same level of thermal stress. This is why they often feature a variety of liveries and colors. However, for Concorde, maintaining a white exterior was a necessity, not an aesthetic choice. And, thanks to Pepsi, they would discover the ramifications of going against this rule. In 1996, one Concorde, FBTSD, 
took on a new look that captured the world's attention. In the mid-1990s, Pepsi was gearing up for a major global rebranding initiative. As part of their $500 million Project Blue campaign, Pepsi sought to refresh their brand image and capture the attention of a global audience. This campaign was part of Pepsi's efforts to refresh its brand image and appeal to a younger, more global audience. The campaign was designed to create a buzz and distinguish Pepsi from its main competitor, Coca-Cola. At the heart of Project Blue was a bold new logo and packaging design. The iconic Pepsi Globe logo was updated with a more dynamic look and the packaging featured a striking blue color scheme. This redesign was intended to symbolize modernity, energy and a forward-looking attitude, aligning Pepsi with the aspirations of young consumers around the world. But Pepsi didn't stop at just redesigning its logo. Project Blue was a comprehensive global campaign that included a series of high-profile marketing stunts and innovative advertisements. Pepsi leveraged its relationships with celebrities and sports stars to create a series of commercials and public events that captured widespread attention. In August 1996, Pepsi Cola chose Concord as a high-profile platform for their new campaign. As part of this project, Concord FBTSD was painted in a striking blue Pepsi livery. This bold move was a marketing masterpiece, but it also presented significant technical challenges. The Pepsi livery was a dark blue, which absorbed much more heat than the white paint. This presented a significant challenge, how to maintain the Concorde's performance and safety with a livery that could potentially cause overheating. To address this, the Concorde FBTSD was subject to specific operational restrictions during its time in the Pepsi livery. The aircraft was limited to flying at Mach 2.02 for no more than 20 minutes at a time. For the remainder of its flights, it was restricted to Mach 1.7. These limitations were crucial to prevent the airframe from overheating, which could have compromised the aircraft's structural integrity and safety. During its time in the Pepsi livery, FBTSD completed 16 promotional flights around the Middle East. The striking blue paint scheme, combined with Concorde's sleek design, made a powerful visual impact and generated significant media attention. This campaign was a testament to Concorde's status as an icon of luxury and technological advancement. Inside, Concorde maintained its luxurious standards, offering a unique travel experience despite the operational restrictions. Passengers on these promotional flights enjoyed the prestige of flying on the world's only supersonic airliner, now in an eye-catching livery that symbolized innovation and style. After the promotional campaign, FBTSD was repainted back to its original white livery, allowing it to resume normal operations without the speed restrictions imposed by the blue paint. The Concorde's legacy as a technological marvel and a symbol of innovation remains unparalleled in aviation history. From its groundbreaking design and essential thermal paint to the bold Pepsi Project Blue campaign, the Concorde captured the world's imagination. Though it no longer flies, it inspires future generations of aerospace engineers and aviation enthusiasts. What are your thoughts about Pepsi's grand advertising scheme? Let us know in the comments.